Hey guys, it's Victoria and welcome back to Femhead. Today I wanted to do a minimalism Q&A just because you guys like the topic of minimalism so much. I enjoy talking about it. Whenever I put out a minimalism related video or you know, pretty much any video, I get questions. And so I thought it would be fun to ask you guys your questions. So I asked in my weekly email, I asked on Twitter and I asked on Instagram. If you guys wanna follow me on social media, I'll put the fingers up on the screen right now. Today is going to be very casual and laid back. I'm going to just try to answer all the questions that <clears throat> people have asked me and we'll see where this video takes us. Is there anything you had a hard time getting rid of initially that you no longer feel the need for? When I first kind of went through my purge and declutter, it was almost too easy for me to get rid of things. One of the issues I had with like the initial declutter that has gotten easier is I was like, I was just doing it by myself. I live with my husband. I think he was my boyfriend at that time still. Anyways, you know, he was like, I think it's great that you're going through all your stuff, but like I, I'm not at a place where I want to get rid of things yet. There's my stuff and there's his stuff and I had control over my stuff, but I didn't have control over his stuff. There's a balance with sharing space with someone. And I think that's something I somewhat struggled with in the beginning. And I was just like, I just want to get rid of everything, but you get used to it. How do you minimize with things you think you may need someday? I live in a big enough house and still feel crowded. I hate it. Help. Back in, I would say college, and even after college a little bit, I would keep clothing items, weird things, because in my mind, I was, I always told myself, you know, I could use this for a costume someday. This could be, a, you know, part of a Halloween costume. And I came to realize that regardless of what your Halloween costume is, you can go to a thrift store and for a couple of bucks, buy something and that saves you from holding on to something that you're probably never going to use. Have a moment with yourself, a heart to heart and say, is this actually something I'm going to use? Have like a space where you put those items that you're not sure about and you think you might use and put them somewhere. And then after a year passes or six months or whatever time span you feel comfortable with, after that time passes, go back to that area or that box or whatever it is and look at what just sat there, what collected dust, and that might make it easier for you to get rid of. So I'm trying to put together a capsule wardrobe for my current pregnancy and I've never had a capsule wardrobe before. Do you think people notice when you wear the same clothes over and over again? Absolutely not. Like people have done experiments where they wear like the same dress or the same outfit every single day for like a week or a month and they find ways to switch it up. I have a capsule wardrobe that's like 30 items maybe, and I wear a fraction of those 30 items. Lately, I've been wearing either leggings and jeans and some sort of hoodie. Like that is just what I've been wearing. And I think it kind of becomes almost like your uniform. And she also asks, how do you disconnect yourself from sentimental things? There is a balance here and you kind of have to collect all of your sentimental things at once and take a look at them. And there are things that I'm not going to get rid of. I'm not going to get rid of any of my journals. I went through weird phases in high school and college where like I held on to everything. I was on homecoming court and I had that tiara. I had corsages. I had a Red Bull can that a famous person drank out of. Give yourself a space to keep sentimental things. Get your sentimental things together all at once and take a look at it. And I think just like the, the volume and just having everything there kind of makes you take a different perspective on it. How does minimalism impact your holiday mentality, giving and receiving? People in my life know that I live a more minimal life and that affects what they give me. I think receiving gifts, if it's something you love, that's great. If it's not, there is no guilt in either taking it back to the store and returning it or giving it away to someone who will actually enjoy it. And oftentimes like people don't follow up on their gifts. They're not going to be like, you still have that thing I gave you three years ago. If you don't want anything, make that known and let people know like, I would just love so much to spend time with you rather than get a gift. Only give people stuff if it's something that I, I am excited to give them and I know they will love. I'm not just going to give gifts to give gifts. Is there some type of gift and maybe it's not a physical thing that you can give? Dinner out, is it watching their kids while they go on a date? Is it going ice skating, has to go to the climbing gym? What are these people interested in? And can you give them something, an experience rather than a thing? How do you combat the desire to try new things like skin products with your desire to keep, keep things simple? 
I make a list and I'm sure I'll talk about that plenty. I kind of have a rule where I have to use up a certain skincare product. Like I can't get a new moisturizer until I use up the moisturizer I have, unless it's like breaking me out or something. How did you settle on a minimalist approach? I don't remember what originally got me into it. We came back from a trip. I read the book, The Life-Changing Art of Tidying Up and like I went to town. Uh, it started in my closet and it spread throughout my house and it spread throughout my life and it just felt so good it felt so freeing it opened up my time and my space to other things once i started there was no going back how do you get your partner involved with minimalism when they want to hold on to every ratty t-shirt from 10 years ago so i kind of touched on this earlier you can't force someone into minimalism because that makes them just hold on to their stuff tighter you have to lead by example. They can look at your closet, your side of the closet and see how like neat and organized it is, how easy it is for you to get ready, how easy it is for you to put your things away. Michael wasn't like opposed to it, but he was like, I'm just not ready right now. And he just recently mentioned to me, like, I'm ready to go like another level deeper through my closet. And I'm like, whenever you're ready, I will be there for you and I'd love to help. Let people know you're there, but not push it on them. How do you determine if an item that is no longer bringing you value is worth selling or just giving away to Google, Salvation Army, etc.? I think it depends on the amount you spent on it. How much can you actually sell it for? What's the hassle of like going through the process of like, are you going to sell it on eBay, on Craigslist, on Facebook, on Poshmark? What does that cost? What does it cost to then like meet up with people to look at it? Is this worth my time to sell it or would it just be more worthwhile to donate it? How does one get started with minimalism? Are there certain books you recommend reading or documentaries to watch? I mean, the most popular book I can think of is Marie Kondo's Life-Changing Art of Tidying Up. Tips for traveling with less, you don't need as many clothes as you're going to pack. I always limit myself to a carry-on size. Take the time to think through what you're actually going to be doing on the trip, what the weather is like, look that up. What activities are you going to be doing? Are you gonna be somewhere you need a swimsuit? Is it gonna be raining? Make a list first, then pull all those things out and really look at the things. Try to kind of a little mini capsule wardrobe. I always wanna pack some sort of hair styling tool and I never ever use it. <laughs> and so you just have to kind of, a, you know, once again, a little heart to heart with yourself and ask yourself, what are you actually going to use? When is it acceptable to call yourself a minimalist? From the moment you start your decluttering journey, you can call yourself a minimalist. There's no finish line. I had a video recently where it was kind of my like fall declutter. I had a couple comments like, wow, I expected you have way less stuff and you're just kind of a normal person, aren't you? The amount of stuff that makes me happy and makes me feel content is going to be different from the amount of stuff that makes you happy and makes you feel content. So I think as soon as you start your minimalism journey, call yourself a minimalist. Tips on decluttering items you feel attached to but really don't need to keep for anything. Thank you. Take a picture of it. If it's a sentimental thing that just the act of looking at it is what gives you that like rush of endorphins, take a picture of it and store that in your digital world. Where do you start if you have what feels like a ton of extra stuff? For example, combining two households together into a smaller home. Break it up into bite-sized chunks. I think when you feel overwhelmed, something like the KonMari method from Marie Kondo is really beneficial because she breaks it up. Do what you can when you can do it. One weekend, go through your clothes. The next weekend, go through your paperwork, books, or like whatever her like checklist is. Each weekend, tackle a new one. Being a chick minimalist, as you are, oh, <laughs> thank you, um, and motivation to keep going, like a clean kitchen, taking nice photos, feeling pretty, and so on. <sighs> I don't know what you mean by a chick minimalist, but I think it's just owning items that you feel good. And I think once you kind of clear out the stuff that doesn't bring you happiness and that you make space for adding things in that you get really excited about, don't feel like you need to rush to fill up that space with those perfect items. Give yourself time to find them. The process of choosing something and looking for it and buying it is almost as special as owning it. Don't just get stuff because it you know, could work. Get it because you're so incredibly excited to have it. I'm not necessarily like a clean person and I tidy in bursts. I love a Sunday deep clean, a 15 minute tidy in the morning or at night. Do what your time allows you to have. And even if it's just you set the timer for 15 minutes or you put on a podcast and you clean during that podcast, just 
Don't feel like you have to tackle everything at once. How to stop buying new cosmetics. I have a terrible problem with this. Make it a rule. You can't buy a new certain thing until either it expires or you run out of it. Make a cosmetics and makeup want list. And every time you see something on YouTube or social media or online or out in person and you're like, oh my God, oh my God, I have to have that. Put it on your list. Maybe don't go to like Sephora or Ulta or any of the makeup stores. Remove yourself from situations where you get that urge. There's some Something about keeping a list and organizing that list and finding the perfect one that like satisfies that itch without actually spending the money or collecting the things. How do you get the motivation to maintain a minimalistic home? The motivation is in the reward. Like it is so satisfying to not only have like a clean house, but an organized house where like everything has a place. That's the reward in itself and that's the motivation. I usually do like two declutters a year and they aren't as big as my first one one, but it's just, you know, taking time to go through my bathroom chores, going to the kitchen, my closet. The motivation comes from the reward. Are you a digital slash media and lifestyle minimalist too? Like music, social media, news, schedule, goals, etc. And I think once you kind of get into minimalism, it starts affecting different aspects of your life. And it has really affected how I spend my time, my to-do list. I will go through and I'll like clean out all the different documents and everything on my computers, organize the things I want to keep, only keep the apps on my phone that I use. How to create a capsule wardrobe when you have anxiety about buying clothing. I would say going shopping with items in mind, like I want to find this type of jacket or I want a new pair of jeans. If you don't absolutely love it, then don't buy it and don't feel like bad that you went all the way to the store and didn't come away with anything. Like there's nothing wrong with walking away from the store empty handed. And it's okay to not commit to something because obviously you're not committing to it for a reason. And if you have a personal style that is very basic, there's nothing wrong with having like a basic wardrobe. I am very basic and boring right now. You could go into the mindset of one thing that excites you that's different from a wardrobe and get that and see if it's something you actually wear. And maybe you're just not at a point in your life where you want a very eccentric wardrobe and there's nothing wrong with that. How do you start downsizing when you have very little time to go through your things? Bite-sized chunks. If your goal could be to just go through your shoes today, that is a totally doable thing. Do 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, and it is something that's totally doable. I'm a college student, I want to downsize, but I don't want to get rid of something in the moment and realize I do still need it. I don't want to replace items if I can help it, but I want to simplify. Have a couple different piles. Have your, yeah, I have no qualms with giving this away and donating it and getting rid of it. If you have items that you're like, I just don't know, like I don't want it, but I also don't want to give it away, keep that in a separate pile and have your keep pile. And then put your I'm not quite sure items somewhere where you can't see them. If you go into that box or tub or whatever it is to get out an item, you can keep that item. But after like six months or a year, if you haven't touched those items, it's probably safe to give them away. Progression of your minimalist goals. Where What were your goals when you first started out as a minimalist and how far have you come since then? What are your goals now? I think when you first start, it's much more of like having less physical things. Over the years, it is about refining and fine tuning what I have and it's more now about what I bring into my life rather than what I'm getting rid of, what I spend my time doing, who I spend my time with. It affects other areas of your life in a positive way. I think that is all my questions that I got. I hope I answered them. Thank you so, so much to everyone that wrote in with questions. I really appreciate you taking the time to think of the questions and send them in. Let me know if you enjoyed today's video by giving it a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe to Femhead for more of me, more minimalism, and all the other fun things I talk about. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.